The World Health Organization is urging fully vaccinated people to continue wearing masks. The recommendation comes as the COVID-19 Delta variant, first detected in India, spreads worldwide. It is also coming as many countries, including the U.S., have ended mask mandates and most other pandemic restrictions. Joining us now is John Moore, a professor of microbiology and immunology at Weill Cornell Medical College. Professor Moore, welcome. Great to see you again. So the CDC has said if you're fully vaccinated, you can go without a mask, both indoors and outside. Um, so do you think that this recommendation by the CDC might change based on this warning from the WHO? Well, it's possible because we, we the Biden administration will always listen to the, to the WHO. But I think this advice depends a lot on where you live in the USA. If you're in an area such as the Northeast and California where vaccine uptake is very high, then the advice is not as urgent as it would be if you're in states in the South where vaccine uptake is still disappointingly poor. I mean, Delta is unlikely to infect a large percentage of vaccinated people. It can still infect vaccinated people, but it's not uh, a great risk, and there's minimal risk of hospitalization and severe infections. But if you're not vaccinated, Delta is highly transmissible, is more dangerous, and will cause substantial problems in parts of the country with low vaccine uptake. So in those areas, absolutely mask wearing should become back a norm when Delta spreads to a high level in those areas of the country. And so how do you expect people who are fully vaccinated to navigate this, especially when you bring into the scenario young children who are too young to get vaccinated, even in these areas where there are high vaccination rates among adults and 12 and older? Well, what I think will happen is that local health authorities guided by the CDC and working with them will track how much Delta variant there is around the local communities. It won't be done on a street-by-street -street basis, but on a city-by-city -city basis. And fortunately, Delta is still relatively few infections in the USA. Now, it's becoming a higher and higher percentage of the infections. But at the moment, across the USA, the infection rate is still low. Now, if that increases, particularly in some parts of the country, then policy will have to be adjusted. But these infection rates are being monitored carefully. The percentage caused by the Delta variant is being tracked and advice will be adjusted accordingly. But here in, in Manhattan, where I live, where, where there are relatively low infection rates, um, very little Delta around, and the population is highly vaccinated. So I personally don't intend to change my current practices but I'll be watching and waiting and seeing if, if the situation evolves. And so what is your biggest concern, Professor, and what are the biggest concerns from health officials regarding the Delta variant here in the U.S.? I mean, we always, we knew it was coming. We, we understood it was here. We understood the percentage of new positives that can be attributed to the Delta or it is increasing. Um, is it worrisome at this point? Well, it is for parts of the country where vaccine uptake is low. We're going to see two Americas. We're going to see regions of the country that are substantially protected from infection. And we're going to see regions of the country that are highly vulnerable to this kind of variant, which is unquestionably more transmissible and does appear to be more dangerous. So, you know, in Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, Arkansas, Wyoming, states with low vaccine uptake, that, back, that virus variant will spread, and the people who are, have been evading or avoiding taking vaccines to which they're entitled, they're going to get a rude awakening in the coming months because although you can run, you can't hide from this kind of variant. It will spread, and it will catch you if you're not vaccinated. So we're going to see two, two Americas, the protected and the, and the vulnerable. Very important information and, uh, you know, very important warning to those who still remain unvaccinated. John Moore, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, John.